Shalom, Ahab, Wa, Baraka. In other words, peace, love, and blessings. First and foremost, Double honors to the elder apostles, great millstone, and the prophets, and the teachers, the disciples, and also the sincere Akyama Akwa in this 100% truth. Now, I've got a bit of good news. I've never really brought news out, but I got some good news. There's GMS Arizona camp. And now I know they've been out here, but um, next weekend, I think we're all going to, uh, to um, I'm gonna go stand with them, which is a big deal to me. So, just letting you know. That's why I, uh, I try not to say anybody's name because I, uh, don't want to say something wrong and then pr be promoting your uh, 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 your camp. So, but today, I know that I'm going to be standing with uh, the great millstone pretty soon. So, the Wadawabarakatami Hawa Baha Shimiyahu and Shai Baha Shimapakadash for sending other, other um, apostles and prophets and teachers out here so I'm not alone anymore. So next week I'll be standing with the uh, Great Millstone Camp. But today the name of this class is called Only Fools Sleep. Only Fools Sleep. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, I want to start with uh, how I always start not really like how I always start my classes, but um, today it's how I'm starting. And we're gonna go straight to um, Ezekiel chapter 37, KJV. Let's go down to verse nine. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy. O son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So the point of that is, who are the slain that need to, to that, that 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 need to live again? Let's get it. Because this goes all the way back into uh, Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. And then you go down to verse 40, 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai shall sin against thee in hunger in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until thou be destroyed. So, those are the slain that need to breathe again. Who had a yoke of iron upon their neck until they didn't know who they were? So to be destroyed and be slain, it's saying the same thing. It's saying that they're going to take your memory, all memories of your culture, heritage, and your past history away from you. And then they're going to try and um, how, groom you into the person that they would like for you to be. So, the people in Ezekiel 37 and 9, Then he said unto me, prophesy to the wind. We know that that's talking about the Israelites that have lost their way. They don't even know that they're Israelites. They tried to tell you guys that the Israelites don't exist anymore, that they went extinct. That is a lie. Any 
everything the government tells you is a lie. If, if anything, you can name it, and, and it's gonna come out in a couple years, oh yeah, we might have uh, misjudged on that, and they, and they turn it into, they weren't lying, they just didn't have the truth. So, then he said unto me, prophesy to the wind, prophesy to the son of man, say to the wind, thus saith Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, come from the four winds, who was scattered to the four corners of the earth? The Israelites, why? Because they wouldn't keep the laws. So who got that yoke of iron? The Israelites. Why? Because they wouldn't keep the laws. In Deuteronomy 28 and 15 it says, I'm going to put all these curses on you. Why? Because you won't keep the laws. So what did your oppressor tell you? When he brought you to this land, he said, oh, all those laws are done away with. Don't even worry about keeping the laws. You don't have to do that. But now where's oppression at? Is, it, is everybody being oppressed still? Yep. Is everything that according to Scripture, what's happening is... The world is ending due to the fact that it was given into the hands of the wicked. But like I said, today's class is called Only Fools Sleep. So let's get right into it. Let's jump over. Now we know that, that, that the only people we're talking to are Israelites. And what Israelites are we talking to? The ones that were slain, which is every Israelite. Only one third of you are going to listen, though. I understand that very clearly. But let's get into it. Uh, let's start off with the book of Isaiah, chapter 29. We'll go back to what we were, uh, I think we were talking about this last week. 29 and 13. Wherefore, thus saith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Sorry. Wherefore, the Lord said, for, uh, for as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. So, so, so what we're getting into right here is um, the, the, the people are, are, are liars, for the lack of better words, they're liars. Let's get Isaiah, this is what they really feel like. Let, 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 let's, let's go back a little bit, because um, I skipped over precepts. Let's stay in the book of Isaiah, and we're going to go to chapter 29. I thought I was in chapter, I went to chapter, uh, no, I mean chapter 30, chapter 30. And we're going to go down to verse 9. Let's start at verse 8. And then we'll go back to Isaiah 29 and 13. So at verse 8, this is, um, now go write it before them on in a table. Note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So it's telling you that this is this is how it's always been. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yahweh, which say to the seers, the visionaries, see not, and to the prophets, the prophes prophecy or the prophet, a prophet means to say before. Prophecy means to say before. Seer is a visionary. So, to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, lie to us, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise the word and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly in an instant. How far do I want to go with that? How far do I want to go with that? I ain't even put how far I want to go. So, I'm going to stick right there. So these people, 
This is the definition right here of an antichrist. They don't care to have anything to do with what the scriptures really say. So if that's the way you feel, that makes you against Christ. When you're against Christ, the Bible says there are many antichrists. Well, this is why. Because there are many people that are against the truth. Once you hear the truth and the word is out, all of a sudden everybody starts freaking out. So, now, when you, um, we know that these people are rebellious, they're lying children, they don't want to hear the truth. This is where the sleep comes in. This is where the foolishness comes in. But let's, let's keep going. Let's jump back now. Let's go back over to Isaiah 29 and go back down to 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and the fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. So they, they, they want you to almost tell them the truth, but really they want to be lied to. So they'll come up and, and say, yeah, man, that's exactly right. Yeah, this, that, and the third. But then they'll go back to their uh, way of life, what they were taught in the beginning. And um, here it is. This is what I want to read. I want to back it up a little bit. Go to verse 10. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. Now, what did I tell you? Let's jump back up to 13 now. Wherefore, the Lord said, For as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, You too. Shalom on my cloth. But have removed their heart far from me. And their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. So you, you see, they they already hated the most high in the beginning. They'll 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 tell you what you want to hear, which I don't even get that. But I guess it's from embarrassment or something, because they're gonna yeah. say the right thing. But then when it comes down to it, they're not going to follow the instructions that were given to them. Let me go ahead and keep moving around. Let's jump over to Proverbs chapter 20. But we know that the Most High, because of this, He put the spirit of deep sleep. That deep sleep means they will not understand what's going on. And we'll, we're, going to, we're going to address that too. But let's go over to the book of Proverbs chapter uh, 20. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 20. And we're going to um, go down to verse 4. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. So what it's actually saying, these are called parables. This is... Um, what it's actually saying is that the person that's not going to study in these end times, when shit hits the fan, they're not going to know what to do. And you're going to wish that so anything that's talking about being poor or being hungry, that means that you're going to be left not knowing where to take a left or right, straight, go back, jump, sit. You're not going to know what to do in these end times because you didn't open the book. <laughs> so the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold he justifies not doing the works do you understand that the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold he's making excuses to not go out into the highways and the hedges and preach to the Israelites Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. And that goes right into the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. So we are going to address that in a couple more precepts. 
but that's what it's building up to. But let's go ahead and keep moving. Let's go to Proverbs um, chapter chapter 10 and let's go to verse 4 again. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent maketh rich. So the person, like I keep telling you, this is not talking about, I mean, you can take it for the, for the face value. If you don't work, you don't eat. That's pretty simple. The harder you work, the more money you make, the richer you get. But what this is actually saying is the person that doesn't study is going to not understand what to do in these end times. It has nothing to do with making money or being rich. Rich means filled with knowledge. Poor means I don't know what the fuck to do because I don't know where to go. I don't know what's going on in this end time. What are the prophecies? Who knows? Because you have to open the book and read and find out that everything they said was a lie. They won't even let me inside of a church. They know I know the truth. The spirit of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, comes with me wherever I go. So guarantee they're not letting me in their building, built with the hands of man. The most high don't dwell there anyway. That's why it's filled with lies. Lies. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 19. The, the church is the slack hand. The church grooms you to not understand or study. The church tells you the laws are done away with. Let me read it again. Proverbs 10 and 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. You're not going to study. You're not going to have any wisdom. You're not going to study. You're not going to have any wisdom. But the hand of the diligent, he maketh rich. So if you're going to sit there and take this seriously, receive the messages, you are going to be made rich in the kingdom. Who knows? Maybe even on earth. It's, you never know. The Most High gets to do whatever He wants. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. So I'm not going to sit here and, and navigate you through exactly what He's going to do because I could never do that. That's not part of the 100% truth. Let's keep going. Let's stay in the book of Proverbs and um, go down to uh, uh, chapter um, 19 and we'll go to verse 15. Slothfulness casteth in a deep sleep. I'm sorry, slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Once again, the people that are not going to receive this doctrine that are not going to and the people that understand the message are the ones that I'm talking about the rest of you are doomed anyway you can just keep on moving but the people that receive the message and understand the message and then turn their back on it that's the one that's going to be hungry because you are going to realize that you are the one with the opportunity to enter into the kingdom with the rest of the children of Israel but you chose worldliness and through your worldliness you chose to be part of the chaff that will be put in a bundle and burned with fire let me read it again slothfulness sloth, slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep and an idle soul suffereth hunger the idle soul the hunger every time watch i'm going to prove it too that that hunger is not knowing what to do that not knowing what to do in the end times the sleep is wanting to be part of the world so when you go when you hear this truth and you understand it but you decide worldliness would be better for you then you're going to find out that's what it's really talking about sorry this tree keeps smacking me in the back of the head <laughs> so let's keep going let's keep going let's go to the uh let's stay in proverbs still let's go over to chapter 23 now All right, Proverbs chapter 23, and we'll go down to verse 21. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. Those are the people that are just buried in worldliness. Your drunken false doctrine. You're a glutton in the worldly lifestyle. You just take it all in. You want it all. 
Well, guess what? It, it, what, it, what it says here is that for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. In other words, all of your um, partying and believing in the false teachings and the justifications on you can do whatever you want, it's going to leave you with nothing. At the end, when shit hits the fan and you realize you had a chance to repent, but you didn't, and you thought you did, <laughs> that's going to be the funny part. That's when we're going to mock you. It's because you're going to think that the, the Most High is going to save you when you did no works. You have no, you have, you have nothing on your resume that, that gives you an opportunity to be in the kingdom. You just, you did nothing. In fact, let's read it again. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. And drowsiness, drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. You're asleep. You have no spirit in you. And the Most High is going to deal with you for that. He's taking you out slowly in travail. You'll see that too. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 20. Uh, we're going to go down to verse 13. Love, not sleep. Lest thou come to poverty. Shalom. 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 Love, this is, um, let me go back. Proverbs 20 and 13. Love, not sleep. Lest thou come to poverty. Open thy eyes and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. So how can you open your eyes and bread satisfy you? Open your mind, and when you take in the doctrine and you understand it and receive it correctly, you'll be satisfied with what the scriptures are really saying. The scriptures are actually telling us something, but most people want to turn it into this mystical thing. It's saying, follow the instructions and get from point A to point B. Point A is this hell on earth. Point B is the kingdom. Don't you understand yet? Let's keep going. Let me read it one more time. Let me read it one more time. Proverbs chapter um, <clears throat> 20, um, 24 and, wait, what, what were my? Proverbs chapter 20 and 13. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Shalom. Open thine eyes. And thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Love, not sleep. So always be buried in the scriptures. Always be studying. Always be evolving your mind in the truth. Don't believe all these lies that they tell you. You know what they call me? They call me the black Hebrew Israelite. But yeah, I've got all these Israelites that look like you, that look like her, that look like Chinese people, that look like Mexicans, that look like anybody you can think of. But because we tell the truth, they put a sinister label over our name just to make sure people would think it's some kind of racist movement. The only thing that this movement is about is about teaching the children of Israel who they are, not teaching people what a person is supposed to look like according to the description that would be a, a, a given to us by the government or a European depiction. That's all lies. And we don't deal with lies. Let's keep going. Let's go over to Proverbs, staying in Proverbs. Chapter 24. You know Proverbs got all the great scriptures. 24 and uh, 33. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. So what it's saying is, you keep taking breaks on the truth. And this goes directly to uh, all of you uh, camp members that are being kind of lazy. You take breaks on the truth. Before you know it, you haven't done a class or studied in a week. Then it's two weeks, then it's three weeks. Next thing you know, thou shalt come to poverty as one that travailed. Before you know it, you have no understanding anymore and you're in great pain because it hits you like a quick pain. Oh, what the, 
I don't know what to do all of a sudden. I was studying, but what did I do? Like I told you, 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 you took your hands off the plow. But in, in the beginning of the class, that's the first, uh, that's one of the first things I said. Um, or I haven't said that yet, maybe. But that's the problem. Maybe I need to, maybe that's the precept I need to get out right now. Let's go to um, the book of Isaiah. Chapter 31. So, I got a better precept. Hold on. Let me read it again. Let me read it again. I got, I got a better precept for you right now. Something just came to mind. Great precept came to mind. Let me read that again. This is uh, Proverbs 24 and 33. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, and folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. So what it's saying is this is going to hit you quick and painful, and you're going to be as desperate as an armed man. Now this, you know what? This goes right to the MOTB. You know why? Because you've been groomed. You didn't pay attention to any of the prophets, none of the elders, none of the teachers. You justified your whole lifestyle. You told us that God knows your spirit. Laws have been done away with. I'm doing it for the children. You made all these excuses. But now, you're as desperate as uh, an armed man. And an armed man is willing to kill for what he wants. So what are you going to do? Let, let, let's go over to the um, let's go over to the book of Isaiah. This is exactly what you're going to do when shit hits the fan. Isaiah chapter 31, and we're going to go straight. We're going to start from the top, 31 and one. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for hell, and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. You're going to be desperate. So guess what you're going to do? You're going to go to the oppressor. And you know what the oppressor is going to tell you? Got to get it. Got to get it. What do you guys think the oppressor is going to say? I'm going to show you right now. He's going to tell you, sure. You can definitely be a part of our society. Of course you can. And he's going to say exactly this. Um, let's get to the point. First, if this is uh, Revelation chapter 11, uh, I mean chapter 13, starting at verse 15. And he had power to give life to unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy and sell Save ye they had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So, they're going to be like, yeah, you can be a part of this society. Come on in. But what's really going to happen is, he's going to say, this is how you join our society. By being marked. That's what they do to cattle and sheep and any other livestock that they have ownership over. Them. They mark them. Shalom on him. So, like I said, when we were in Isaiah 31, coming out of Proverbs 24 and 33, telling you that 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 you're you're gonna first, it's gonna hit you so quick, it's gonna be like a woman in travail. Oh no! Uh, and then you're gonna be desperate because you don't know what to do. Then you're gonna go to the oppressor for help, but the oppressor is gonna say, "Sure, I can help you." All you have to do is sign here and put this thing in your hand and you're safe. But are we sure about that? Because in the name of um, safety, let's go ahead and go to 
Revelation 14 and start at verse 11. Um, no, no, no. They'll start at verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. So it's saying if you receive, what was it again? Mark. And um, in the uh, Greek, Latin, it's karagma. And we all know that the etymology, eta, true, mology meaning, means a subdermal implant that is beneath the surface of the skin. Right? So you're going to be desperate. You're going to run to the oppressor. And this is how it's going to play out. And the Most High, what's he going to do? He's going to destroy you for it. Let's go back into um, the class. Though. Kind of, kind of went off to the side there for a minute, but let's get back over to um. We're gonna go to Second Thessalonians and chapter three, and we're gonna go down to verse ten. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. So, going back into the class, you guys aren't, you're, 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 you're wasting your time. This is the great sleep. This is the slumber. You're, you're out being a busybody in other people's business instead of just sticking to the scriptures, taking your notes, studying, preparing. We're not in the end time. We're in the end of the end times. Y'all right, Ock? You got it? He dropped his phone, man. You know, if he dropped the phone, that, that might just be it right there. So, let me read it again. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. For even when... For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So, going right back into the beginning of the class. If you're not going to study, if you're not going to read the book, if you're not going to take notes, if you're not going to look up what the actual word means, then you're not going to you're not going to have any type of um, ability to have an understanding in these end times of what we're actually supposed to be doing. And what are we supposed to be doing? Well, me, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm out here in the highways and the hedges, going back to Ezekiel 37 and 9. I'm trying to wake up the people. That's what he wants me doing right here, right now. When I go home, it goes back to the laws. I live my whole life through these laws. So, yes, my wife and my daughter wear dresses every day. They don't wear pants. It's not, it's not um, how would you say, it? it's not permitted in my house. Since I'm the ruler of my castle, no dresses on a woman in, no pants on a woman in my house. That's the way it goes. Thou shalt not adorn thyself in that which a man wears. And you know what? We don't go around wearing skirts. We do, we, we keep the high holy days. That's how it's really done. We follow all the ordinances. We keep the health laws. We do what the scriptures say. If you do what the scriptures say, then Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai will deal with you. But what people do is they say what the scriptures say and then they go back to a worldly life. That's get you, that, that just literally, that's the part where he says, and many will come and I'll tell you, I did not know you. Bless you, man. Shalom, Bless shalom. You. I'm not, he's not going to know anybody that doesn't keep the laws. That's all there is to it. He's not going to know anybody that doesn't keep the laws. So, if you're not going to study, you're not going to teach your family, you're not going to get your house in order. And yes, part of getting your house in order is like either putting your foot down or putting your foot up somebody's ass if you have to. But while they're in your house, they have to follow the rules that the Most High gave us. That's a righteous lifestyle. Now, letting people, you know, and on, on, when it comes to your wife, I'm going to tell you the truth. The scriptures clearly say, if you love a woman, 
and she doesn't keep the laws, that you can still keep your wife. But personally, I don't see how it would work. I don't know how it would work. My woman would not be able to be with me if she didn't keep the laws because it would be too impossible. It would be impossible. She would want to leave. There's no way you want to be around somebody that follows instructions if you're not going to follow instructions. But this is all about being lazy in the truth when it comes down to it. If you're not going to do the works, you're not going to eat. The, the eating is the, the actual, just the, the, the basic wisdom and understanding. If you can't even, you're not even going to get back. Let me keep going. Let's jump over back into Proverbs. That's where all the fools are, so let's keep it. Let's keep over here in Proverbs. Oh. Let's go to um, chapter um, <coughs> 13. And going down to verse 4. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Like I said, just going back into wisdom and knowledge. You could take the face value and say, yeah, you know, lazy people ain't going to have shit. But really, that's true. But really what it's saying, when you're lazy in the truth, you're not going to have understanding. When you're lazy in the truth, you're not going to have understanding. But the people that study and sincerely have faith, sincerely have works, keep the laws to the best of their ability according to their um, understanding. So the slugger's going to want stuff, but he ain't going to get nothing because he doesn't do anything to get it. But you gotta understand, these are parables talking about studying to show yourself approved. Let's jump around some more. Let's jump around because, this, let me read it one more time. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. You know what that takes us right into? The, the, the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. So let's get it. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. And we'll, we'll start from the top. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. There were five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So, let me, let, you know what? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So the ones, so what it's saying is, the, these, these are all Israelites. And two thirds of these Israelites have a lamp. The, the thing is, is not everybody's gonna get that lamp. These other nations don't have a lamp. But we have a lamp. And some of us, two-thirds of us, choose not to put oil. In other words, choose not to study. Choose not to take notes. Choose not to keep the laws, the statutes, the direct commands that were given to us as Israelites. So you have no oil. You have no understanding. You have no wisdom. They chose not to do that. They chose worldliness. They were out partying. They were out playing with their friends. They were doing everything, fixing their car, running around, you know. I mean, we all got certain things we have to do, but there's a time and place for everything. The problem is, is that the foolish virgins had no time for Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shai. So, let's see what happens. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold! The bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. All those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. In other words, all the people that were studying in this truth had knowledge and wisdom. They had understanding of what to do in the end of the end times. That's what it's talking about. That's the lamp. The lamp is the ability to hold the instructions. Only a few of us are even given a lamp. So when you have that lamp and you choose not to learn, 
so the, 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 when you're learning and you're studying, that's the actual oil. The more you study, the more you learn, the more oil you have. The more wisdom, the more knowledge, the more, let's see it, let's see it. All those virgins that arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish ones said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. So what they're saying is, if I waste all my time trying to teach you, I got, I got a, a path lit for myself. I don't got time to teach you now. That was back then when we were all learning together. But, and, and it tells you about the famine of the word that's coming soon. Not of food or of drink, but of the word of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. So when, when, my, when my oil is filled up and the Most High calls me, I'll be able to see exactly where to go. I'll know exactly what to do. But the other ones, they're not. And I'm not going to take time to stand around and explain to you when you spent all of your time in worldliness. You loved the world. You saw the truth and you loved the world. That was the problem. See, the ones that didn't put oil on their lap, what it's saying is, one third of the children of Israel are gonna to study to show themselves approved to come back into the kingdom. Two thirds of you are gonna stay in the world and you're gonna love worldliness more than the truth because you have a lamp. That means you're able to understand this doctrine, but he's gonna wipe you clean. He's not gonna let you understand it anymore because you don't want to. That's why you wouldn't trim your lamp in the first place. Let's finish it out though. Uh, verse 10. And while they went to buy, the groom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door shut. And the door shut. In fact, I'm going to read a couple more. i got to get a precept. Afterwards came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I know you not. Verily, verily, I know you not. So what did he do? He called up the children of Israel that were studying, that were keeping the laws, that were following the instructions, and he called them up into the cloud. Let's get it. You already know where I'm going with this. Revelation chapter 11, verse 12. What does it say? And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So, that goes for you two thirds too. You're also part of the enemy. You're an enemy. You know why? You have an oil, you have a lamp that can hold oil, and you rejected it. You are a forbearer. So you are a rejecter of the word. That makes you against Christ. It literally makes you a two-thirds of your antichrist. You're, you're against Christ when you know the truth. And you're the only ones that can um, actually get this understanding. But since you um <laughs> which is crazy to me, you love the world more than Yahweh. It's crazy to me. You can have the truth. You can have the kingdom. You understand it partially, but he's put a deep sleep over you now because when you did have the opportunity to understand, you rejected it. Wow. Let's keep going. Let's go over to the book of Luke. Jump around some more. Chapter 9. So, what I, what I was reading at the end of that in verse 12, he said, Verily, verily, I, tell, I say unto you, I do not know you. Watch this. You know why? Because you didn't follow the instructions. So if you don't follow the instructions, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai himself is going to say, I don't know you. Just like you didn't know me when you had the chance to learn about me. 
you had your chance and now it's over i don't know you now in luke 9 62 what does it say it says um let me get it I do not know you. And what did he say in Luke 9 and 62? Yahweh Shai said unto them, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of heaven. So, if you were given the word and you had the opportunity and you kind of understood it, but you forbear, you rejected it so much <laughs> that. <laughs> That that Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, has now rejected you. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. And you know what? Let me get one more on that. Let me get one more on that. I just remembered another one. Um, you rejected the Most High throughout your life. That's why it says the grace period. The whole time you're here, you have a chance to repent. The whole time you're here. But like I said, you <laughs> you had you had an opportunity. I gave you the words. I gave you the plow. And the first thing you didn't even do anything. You just took your hands right off and ran right back to the world. And I am going to prove that that these people love the world more than Yahweh at the end. We're not going to leave that out. But um. Let's get let's get let's get Romans. Sixteen and seventeen. Remember, I did not know you. I gave you an opportunity to do the works, but you didn't do them. You rejected them. I did not know you. That's what Yahweh is going to tell him, right? Well, what does Romans sixteen and seventeen say? Now I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Why do you think the door gets shut and they're banging on it to come in? You ain't getting in. I don't know you. You didn't follow the instruction. You 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 rejected me. Now I reject you. That's all there is to it. Now let's move around some more. Let's go to the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, chapter 10 and 38. Now, the just shall live by faith. Now, the true faith is having works with your faith. You shall have works with your faith. But if any man draw back, my soul, I have no pleasure in him. Once again, the just are going to put their hands upon the plow and they're going to keep it there until the harvest is finished. So, what happens if you take your hand off the plow? Or, what did it say? If you draw back, my soul have no pleasure in you. So I'm going to separate myself from you. Let me keep going. Let's jump over and do some... Uh, Let's do some more jumping around. Second Timothy. <laughs> chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, let's go down to verse 10. Listen carefully. I've been telling you all the, uh, the whole time that this sleep and the slumber, the folding of the hands, that's all wanting to be in the world not wanting to study the scripture. Now I'm going to prove it to you. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, hath loving this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. And, and then uh, Crescen, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to uh, Dalmatea. So 
He was in love with worldliness, and what it did was it separated everybody. He didn't want to follow through with the rest of the prophets, and he caused a separation in the prophets. So that's why it says, I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause divisions, uh, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Having loved this present world. So he was in love with worldliness, and this is why you can never get, you, you, you can't, you can't, you can only love one, you can't love one and the other, you can't love them both. Either you're going to keep the laws, or you're going to hate the laws. Either you're going to, you're going to love the world, or you're going to hate, you're going to hate Yahweh. You're going to love Yahweh, you're going to hate this present world that we live in. This place is doomed, and everybody knows it, and they walk around like it's just the greatest, greatest day ever. This is it's amazing how people don't want to comprehend what's happening around them. It's all about distraction. Let's keep going. Let's jump around some more. Because Demas loved the world. Let's go to the book of Mark. Keep that in mind. Demas loved the world. Right? So Demas loved the world. So watch this. Let's go down to Mark chapter 4 and go to verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. So Demas didn't love the word. He wasn't, he, he, he didn't, he loved the world. He was in love with this whole lustful riches and other things entering in. All of the things that choke the world out of you, that's what he was in love with. So the word was choked at that point. Now, let's go ahead and um, let's get Second Peter's. Chapter 2, and man, I, I have two precepts, but I only can remember one. So let's just get the one I can remember. Sometimes I write notes down, but they don't have other precepts in my mind too, so it's not always just the notes that I'm bringing out. But um, anyway, I let, let's just get back into it. Second Peter chapter 2, and verse 17. These are well without, these are wells without water, clouds that are are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. There they go. They get you into that lust, just like the cares of the world, the lust of the world. And lust is directly done with flesh. Touch, feel, see, hear, taste. And let me read it again. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who lived in error. While, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. The same people that are telling you that they're going to help you are the ones that are trying to hurt you. That's why they take crafty, wicked, crafty counsel against us. They're, they're, they're thinking of everything they can do to take us down. But unless you guys study to show yourselves approved, to stay in this truth, you're not going to make it. That's why they're saying that this is the end of the end. We're at the end of the end times. The, 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 we're in the beginnings of sorrows. We're in sorrows. The beginnings of sorrows have already started. It's just because it hasn't hit so hard yet that you guys haven't lost everything yet. You're not, you, you think that this is all a joke. It's not in your lifetime. That's what most people say. But um, let me keep going. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh that's the oil in your lamp. 
they are again entangled therein and overcome and later and is worse than them the than the beginning so <laughs> this, this is horrible so these people they come to the most high they escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, the Savior Yahweh Shai himself, the, the Hamashiach. They uh, and, and this is the problem because they have no spirit in them. Remember now, let's go back over to um, uh, verse 17. There are wells without water. There are clouds they carry with tempest. The mist of darkness is reserved forever. These people are wicked. So they start off, it's just like when you start off a race, you start off good and you're running fast and all of a sudden you just fall out. That's what's happening to these people. They're just falling right out because they were never chosen in the first place. That's why they'll, they'll they're the most highlights and escape. But then they find, what is it? Uh, I think I have a precept for it. But their latter end is worse than when they began. So let's get a precept to um, clear that up. I think I have one. I think I, I'm, I'm hoping that this is it. Matthew chapter 12 and I think it's um, verse 43 yeah okay Matthew chapter this is what this is talking about when his latter end is worse than his beginning Matthew chapter 12 verse 43 when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through the dry places seeking rest and find none. So the, uh, he, he, he got rid of the unclean spirit, but he's still not at rest. Then he says, I will return to my house from whence, whence I came. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goeth. Then he goeth he and take. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation so whatever you thought was bad and the most high was <laughs> when when the um when when the man was able to um break free from the unclean spirit but he didn't come back to the most high he didn't study he didn't do anything what he did was he didn't find any rest and so he went right back to like a dog went back to his own vomit what he really did and so his end was seven times worse than his beginning because it said one unclean spirit in the beginning, but his latter end was seven unclean spirits. That's seven times worse. That's the number of completion. He was completely bugged out at the end. Let me go into the book of... Um, I want to... Uh, I got a couple more uh, precepts, and then I'm going to cut it off. I do want to go into the book of James, though, so let's start there. We're going to jump over to the book of James. And we're going to go to chapter 1. And we're going to start from the top. James, a servant of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to the 12 tribes, 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. Like I said in the beginning of the class. The twelve tribes scattered to the four corners of the earth. My brethren, count it joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. And we all know that that goes right into Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou comest to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. But then it goes in to say that gold's tried the fire in verse 5 and up to verse 5 and tells you what to do. I always recommend it. Read the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 2. So, but patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, 
wanting nothing. I'm in want of no good thing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask a how of that, give it to all men liberally. That's free. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So upbraideth not. So in other words, if you don't um, separate yourself from the word, or how about this? You put your hands on the plow, you keep them on the plow. So you start doing the work, you don't stop until the work is done. Upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. So, if you stick to the, 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 the stipe, you, you do the works in sincerity and faith, he's saying he's going to give you the understanding. Let me keep going. But let him ask in faith. Here's where the point comes in. Not wavering. For he that wavers is like the wave of the sea driven by the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, the reason why I want to bring this out is because all you sleepy headed fools. What you do is, because you don't have any understanding and the Most High has taken it from you, your doctrine changes. And it's all over the place. Let's get a precept on it. Let's precept that on Ephesians. So to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, and we're going to go down to verse 14. What does it say? It says, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with the wind, with, with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So we know right away if you're changing your doctrine and you're going away from what the scriptures actually are teaching us, we know that you're trying to lie to us. And that just goes back in the, to, to being asleep. In fact, this is what I understand about the sleepy heads. They want everybody to take a nap with them. They don't want to sleep by themselves. They don't want to sleep alone. They want everybody out there taking a nap with them. I got a couple more precepts and then um, we're going to let it go. So let's go to Ephesians. We already got Ephesians. Let's go back over to Hebrews. And like you guys already know, I just got a bunch of notes here. I'm out here in the highways and the hedges and uh, most high willing. You know, you guys are getting something out of this message. So let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 10 again, go down to verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. So hold fast, stick, stick to the truth, follow the laws, the statutes and the laws, the direct commands. To the best of your ability according to your knowledge stick to the truth fall out of this place fall out of this place come out of for my heat don't be fooled by false teachings the purpose is to put you back in the world okay let's get the book of you know what I'm gonna get the Sirach chapter 2 but I'm going to read a part of it that I've never broken down for you guys before. So let's get that. Okay, the after this, chapter 2. <laughs> These guys are right over here on the other side of me right now, just smoking crack. Just smoking that crack for about half an hour straight right now. That girl that walked past around and some smothered dude, man, they just out here doing it big, just nasty as fuck. Sorry about my appropriate words to explain myself, but it stinks like bug spray over here now. I don't even know what that's all about. So, Sirach, chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 12, though. And I turn myself, and behold, wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man... I knew this was wrong. Sirach, chapter 2. 
gave me Ecclesiastes instead of Ecclesiasticus. It does that to me. You guys know that. Anybody that watches my classes knows this. This tablet, lately I've been able to navigate it, but there's been times where it will not let me in to the scriptures. All right, we're going down to, um, we're going to go into the book of Sirach, chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 12, though. Now, you guys, I've read 1 through 10 to you guys a million times. So, we're going to start. I never read this to you, so I'm going to read this. So, listen carefully. This is Sirach, chapter 2, and verse 12. Whoa! Destruction. The word woe means utter destruction. Woe unto him that is faint. Wait, woe, un, woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinners that goeth two ways. Wave or not. Don't be tossed to and fro by the waves of any false doctrine. Come on, guys. These precepts are lining up. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Faint-hearted, he has no faith. Those are the people that love worldliness more than righteousness. Therefore shall he not be defended. So the Most High is, is not going to protect you. He said that his children that, that, that are doing his works, he's going to give them a way out of situations. He's never going to give them more than they can chew. Uh oh. Alright. Phone's about to overheat, guys. So let me go ahead and just get through this real quick, and then we'll shut it down. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when Yahweh shall visit you? So when you lose patience, what do you do? You take matters into your own hands. That goes all the way back into um, Sirach chapter 2 and. Uh, verse 4. What's those brought upon thee? Take cheerfully and, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. So, when you go down to verse 4, that's what it's talking about. So, go back up to verse um, uh, uh, um, 14. Woe unto him that have lost patience. Because if you lose patience, you're going to try and take matters into your own hands. You're going to get hasty and you're going to fail. You're going to fall apart. And he's telling you that. And then, okay, so let me keep going. Um, they that fear Yahweh will not disobey his word. That's the one, 144 and the one third hopeful elect. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Well, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Woe unto them that has lost patience. And what shall ye do when the Lord has visited you? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they will love him. They that love him will keep his ways. So how do you love the most high? By following his instructions. Not by just living your life saying, I love God and God loves me because he's not judging you yet. Since you haven't been judged, you think you're under a blessing and you're not. And in fact, to have a serious blessing in this world is almost scary if you think about it. Because the world is given into the hands of the wicked, um, pursuant to Job 9 and 24. Um, let me keep going. I want to make sure my uh, thing is still working here. Uh, they that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him and they that love him shall be filled with the law so that's where Mary's going to put his uh, word into our front lips so those are the ones that don't depart away those are the true Israelite one third and 144,000 within that one third shalom to you shalom to you you're the righteous ones verse 17 they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts yeah we're going to we're going to do the works and humble their souls in his sight this is this, this is a humbling experience i have everybody around here nobody you don't see anybody around here trying to listen and find out what the most high has to say you're not the most high you're just some guy reading the bible i'm not the most high i'm one of his messengers all right one more saying well let's read 17 again they that fear the lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight saying we will fall into the hands of Yahweh and not into the hands of men. For as, for as His majesty is, so is His mercy. So, because we're going to keep the laws, we're, going to, we're not going to fall into the hands of the oppressor, like I said. He'll never give us more than we can chew or more than we can handle. He'll always give us a way out. He's protecting us. 
One more, one more, one more, and I'm gonna cut it off because my phone's about to overheat. Um, Philippians chapter three, KJV. For this is a. Um, I'm gonna close out with this. Philippians chapter three and thirteen, brethren. I count not myself to have appreh to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, for, for for getting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Shalom Akim. So, in other words, he's he's not going to dwell in the past, and he's going to move forward into this future of righteousness. So, for all of you guys that are coming into the truth, get out of the past. Start reaching for the future and start reaching for righteousness. And how do you love God? By cleaving to Him. How do you cleave to Him? By keeping the laws, the statutes within the laws, the direct commands, to the best of your ability according to your knowledge. Did you hear me? To the best of your ability according to your knowledge. The Most High is going to do the rest. Do your studies. Take notes. Show your, show your, uh, study to show thyself approved. Do your due diligence. Bear your cross, however you want to say it. Get to work. If you put your hands on the plow and you remove your hand from the plow, if you start doing this work and you step away, you are not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. And you know i got to close out with Revelation. Revelation chapter 22. Go to 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his word shall be. So, remember, what you're doing now is what your reward is going to be in the kingdom. And with that being said, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, it is going to freeze again. All right, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, I hope you're able to get something out of this message. And double honor us all the elder apostle, prophets, and teachers of Great Millstone for sticking in there and bringing out this 100% truth for all these years when everybody's changed their doctrine. You guys are not asleep, but the rest of them seem to have a little sleep on them. Shalom.